The IL-28 was the most highly produced jet bomber in history. Let's see what they did with it in War Thunder. In the immediate aftermath of World War II, most of the major powers were in a mad dash to get new jet-powered aircraft into service as quickly as possible. The Soviet Union was anxious to get a high-speed bomber flying, with the hopes of eventually getting a jet-powered aircraft with intercontinental range, but things started off a bit more modest. With the availability of the RD-45 engine, based off of the Rolls-Royce Neen, the Soviets had a power plant suited to a wide variety of aircraft, and the development of a jet-powered bomber was given a high priority, with a number of projects being opened. The most successful of the first-generation Soviet jet bombers was, by far, the IL-28, with over 6,500 of these things being built, and the aircraft was actually developed relatively quickly. The first flight took place in 1948, and after some modifications, the initial production version entered service in 1950. The plane had some rather advanced design features for the day, and was built on the lessons learned during World War II. The bomber had fixed forward-firing cannon, just in case, and a powered rear gun turret, as well as a crew of only three people who sort of teamed up in their workloads. The IL-28 is roughly in the same class as the Canberra or B-57, and despite some early misconceptions, it was intended from the start to serve only as a tactical bomber. The plane was widely exported, even being produced in China as the H-5, which we also have in the game. The IL-28s were used in combat by a number of countries, and by most accounts it performed pretty well, though they were basically obsolete by the mid-1960s. If you can believe it, the North Korean Air Force still has a few dozen of these in active service, Though the combat utility of a 70-year-old bomber on a modern battlefield is aspirational at best. In War Thunder, we have four versions of the IL-28. The basic Soviet IL-28, the German IL-28, the Chinese H-5, and the Soviet IL-28SH. All four versions are basically identical, with the exception that the SH has different loadouts. The basic armament consists of two 23mm cannons in the nose, and two more in a crude tail turret, alongside 3,000 kilograms of ordnance. The loadouts are pretty basic, with only five presets, but they're flexible enough to give you an option for whatever style of bombing you're going for, and the bombs themselves are pretty tough. The IL-28SH has some external wing hardpoints, which give access to unguided rockets, additional bombs, and gun pods, but otherwise the SH is identical to the other versions. One standout weapon is the FAB 3000 bomb. This thing is enormous, and even though the plane can only carry one of them, it delivers an absolutely inappropriate level of destruction wherever it lands. The flight performance of the IL-28 can make it pretty effective at its BR if you play to its strengths. The plane has decent top-end speed and above-average acceleration. The climb rate isn't as good as some single-engine fighters, but it's good enough, and if you want to do high-altitude stuff, the IL-28 can get you there. In realistic battles, the plane isn't especially maneuverable, it's a bomber after all, but in arcade battles, you can whip it around better than you might think you should be able to, and if you manage your energy effectively, you can defend yourself against more lumbery fighters or inexperienced opponents. Now, to be clear, the IL-28 is absolutely not a dogfighter. It's just not as bad in arcade battles as it is in realistic battles, and you can sometimes catch people off guard. In RB, well, that's what the tail gunner's for, so use your speed and just run. The downside is, like with many other planes, the IL-28 suffers badly from BR compression, and you can get tiered up into missile-armed interceptors. So if somebody gets an AIM-9B off on you, there's really not much you can do about it. 
Flying the IL-28 into missions is a little more interesting than you might think at a first glance. At least, it can be. Jet bomber gameplay is, by its nature, repetitive and somewhat tedious. You fly out, dump some bombs, try to get home, rearm, repeat. But you can mix things up a bit by doing low-level interdiction-style bombing runs, or climbing up to space. If you side-climb at the start of a match, you can often get high enough where it would just take too long to intercept you and people won't bother. The catch is, with such a light bomb load, you have to ask yourself if it's really worth the time to climb up there. At low levels, you can keep the gameplay a little more interesting by trying to like dodge trees and stuff, but accurate low-level bombing can be difficult with only the traditional bomb site and no CCIP or anything. Fun, but difficult. Another thing to remember is that the IL-28 is classed as a jet bomber, and if you land to rearm, you respawn with the rocket-assisted takeoff pods. But as I always remind people, on most maps, you don't actually need them to take off. You can just take them with you if you want. And I've absolutely used the rocket pods for a little extra speed boost when I wanted to escape, you know, from a well-positioned interception, or just get back to base fast faster after dumping my ordnance. The only real word of caution is that if you use them when you're already flying at high speed, it is possible to fly yourself past the red line, so just pay attention to that. The SH version can also carry unguided rocket pods, which gives you the ability in air battles to do the shoot and scoot thing, just flying around taking out targets of opportunity. In close air support, I personally prefer to take the Fab 3000 over the smaller bombs or the rocket pods on the SH. The thing does enough damage to basically cover an entire objective point, and after I drop it, if it seems like there aren't a lot of SPAA, I'll loiter for a few minutes and use the nose guns to mark ground targets I see for my buddies on the ground. If you're up for a challenge, you can take the SH and queue up for air battles with gun pods. It's not easy, but it's very satisfying to get air-to-air -air gun kills in a bomber. Visually, the IL-28 is a pretty basic-looking jet bomber. I like the design, and it has that unique look from the early jet era, with the swept tail but the straight wings, and the huge engine pods. Sadly, none of the IL-28 versions get any interesting paint jobs, but you can find some on War Thunder Live. Landing the IL-28 isn't difficult, but you'll want to practice a couple of times. The flaps provide quite a bit of lift, so pay attention to your nose attitude, and when possible, try to set up longer landing runs. The gear is pretty tough, though, so even if you land a little harder than intended, it'll probably be okay. The cockpit? Okay, so this thing has a better cockpit than some fighters, and a fairly intuitive instrument layout with great visibility. Accurate bombing from the cockpit is quite difficult, but I did have fun flying this one in VR. To close out on the IL-28 and H-5 bomber family. These planes have strong bombs, and the external ordnance on the IL-28SH adds a little spice. They're fast, for their BR, with good engines. The tailgun turret is more useful than you might expect, and my tailgunners have gotten some good kills. And they get the radopods. However, the overall payload is only medium weight. It lumbers a bit in flight, especially in realistic battles. It's quite vulnerable to entry-level air-to-air missiles, and jet bomber gameplay can be pretty tedious sometimes. The final verdict on the IL-28SH is that these are fun and simple bombers to fly, and can provide a nice alternative to the entry-level gunslinger jet fighter gameplay. They're useful for close air support, and if you don't mind the tedious mission profiles, they can be respectable RP grinders. As always, thanks for watching.